Hi, I'm AJ Finn, author of The Woman in the Window, and this is Booktopia's My Life in Books. The book that most influenced my childhood is probably very little known in Australia. It's an American children's classic called The Westing Game, which was published in 1979. The author, now deceased, is Ellen Raskin. And this is a murder mystery for children, but so much wilier and wittier and more suspenseful than most mysteries I've read that were written for adults. And it exposed me to the pleasures and perils of mystery fiction. It's perfect for adults. It's ideal for children. No less than Gillian Flynn acclaims it as one of her favorite books, probably her favorite book. So get thee to Booktopia and buy it. It's worth it. The novel that made me want to be an author, and that was not an ambition I harbored for very long before becoming an author, is Picnic at Hanging Rock by Joan Lindsay. It's an unclassifiable novel. As I've tried to describe it to others, I've heard myself variously say it's a fever dream, it's a tone poem, it's a thriller, it's a social psychodrama. It's unclassifiable, it really resists categorization. It is an Australian classic, but to readers around the world, I would recommend that you seek it out. It explores the ripple effects on a community about a hundred years ago of the disappearance of a select number of young women from an outing in the Australian wilderness. And the reason it made me want to be an author is because it, it demonstrated to me the possibilities of so-called genre fiction, the range and adaptability of a story that you can't neatly slot into one genre or another. It's it's a miraculous book. It's a miracle of a novel. There are two books I wish I'd written, both by women novelists. I, I find myself preferring novels by women, particularly contemporary novels. I think it's because I read a lot of literary suspense, well-written crime fiction, and Women who are exposed on a daily basis to pressures and prejudices and even dangers that I as a man cannot imagine might be more readily able to tap into their dark side or the dark side of the world. Whatever the case, these two novels have really inspired me and made me jealous. The first is Case Histories by the British author Kate Atkinson. This is a literary suspense at its finest. It is a detective novel featuring a private eye. It's also a really humane and compassionate story of loss and love. The second novel is by an Irish-American author called Tana French, and it's called In the Woods. This, too, is a novel that explores the past and its repercussions on the present. It is gorgeously written. She's a real sculptress when it comes to prose, and it takes a bold gambit at the end. I won't describe exactly what it does, but it totally works for me, even though it might not work for most readers. I wish I'd written these books because they are sensationally accomplished from a technical perspective, and because they are so involving and ultimately moving. They, quote unquote, elevate the crime fiction genre. This is a bit of a cheat, but my Desert Island books would be the Sherlock Holmes collection, the collected Sherlock Holmes, all 56 short stories and four novels, in part because of value for money, in part, in larger part, because these stories and the four novels are so boundlessly entertaining and so beautifully written. There's a Poirot novel by Agatha Christie in which Poirot rather rudely dismisses the stuff and substance of these books, the stories, but acknowledges that they are exquisitely written, and they are, and sometimes the plots are far-fetched and silly, as is the case with much crime fiction, but they're ingenious, and few writers in the English language have evoked a world as specifically and as comprehensively as Arthur Conan Doyle did. I could reread them, and indeed have done, endlessly. So that's my Desert Island collection.